is, is the highest level of sexual pleasure is not going to be they not the one that god gave the wap I, i'm telling if if people are listening who know they know when, when you're looking for a wife when you're looking for just like when you're looking for a car just like when you're looking for a home you have to be honest about what is it that you need first and foremost what's his name uh, from fresh and fit was found out to be paying for prostitutes not myron the other one. myron no myron Myron was oh. on, yeah, Myron paying for women. It's like, of course he is, because he doesn't get, so the advice, my daughter right now, my, 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 my daughter's three years old, gorgeous. I'm making it a case to make sure, and she knows she's pretty. I'm making it a case to make sure that she forgets that shit. I think kind of like when we talk about passport bros, it's not necessarily guys who are running away from anything. It's men who've kind of realized the landscape and are looking for something different. There's still like a very small minority of people who are doing this. The vast majority of people don't have the kind of resources that it would take to kind of leave the country to go find a wife or even find people to date. These are just people that are exclaiming that there's something wrong with the situation here. I need to get the fuck away from this situation because it's not good for me. So I don't see anything wrong with people who who realize this doesn't work for them. Because like even to your point before, it's like if you're lame here, you're going to be lame over there. But the funny thing is my lameness is attractive to somebody over there. Whatever you think is lame, because we got to be honest about what we what is considered lame, especially within our community. It's not necessarily the dude who doesn't know how to talk to women or talk to women in a certain way. It's a bunch of people who have fully choked on this fucking uh, internalized anti-blackness that we don't realize that we have. Uh, a lot of the problems that we have in this fucking country or just as a people in general, whether in the diaspora or even on the continent, is that we haven't realized that we've internalized this thing where we don't like ourselves and we express it in different fucking ways. So someone who's actually intelligent, someone who articulates himself in a certain way is unattractive, he's a lame. But in other communities, that dude is a smart, ambitious, right. going individual. So what are you supposed to do with that? Should you waste all your time trying to fit a, to a toxic aesthetic that does nothing for you personally, does yeah. nothing for the community, and you're trying to change the mind of someone who don't want to hear shit. You're you're trying to change the mind of someone you can't tell me nothing. How, what right. do you? <laughs> you like, no, that, and, and, and that's that's a phenomenal point, man. I think, uh, and and maybe you know, forgive me if I if I downplayed it a bit, but like another thing that I observed was, you know, uh, I mean, this is true for every else in the world. It's like uh, masculinity is measured by your usefulness. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. here, it seems like masculinity is measured by your entertainment value, right? Like your, your ability, how theatrical are you? Yeah. Right. And, and we see that play out with the type of men, especially in our community who are rewarded. They are, they are, uh, they, they are theater, uh, men, right. And it's funny. I talked about Drake, uh, being oh. our, our generation's Tupac and people yeah. were looking at me like I was crazy, but yeah. like when, when we, if you really peel back the layers of the music industry that we take so seriously as black folks, it's theater from their personas to their, uh, to their disposition. It is theater. These are not thugs. These are not gangbangers. Oftentimes like Rick Ross, they assume the persona of an actual thug or an actual gangbanger played it up and repackage that to us because again you know we we i think we crave reality to be indistinguishable from theater yeah right and and i think unfortunately in our community because of the level of scarcity that we're in um we we take this shit so damn serious <laughs> and, <laughs> and people are looking at drake and looking at kendrick or oh, kendrick is realer than drake they're both theater yeah uh, uh <laughs> they're both theatrical niggas maybe one is more authentic maybe one is like denzel who plays the same character in every movie that's the best we can hope for but he's still an actor <laughs> uh as an authentic millionaire thug that's bullshit them niggas are millionaires they, they they're far removed from any of that and at one point they might have been involved in that shit i don't know but it's like you can't tell me that you live in a gated community and you're still on that shit that's horseshit. Yeah, you're not coming through.
Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, but you know, and the same the same happens here on YouTube. <laughs> the, <laughs> the same the same happens here on YouTube. And kind of like I was I was telling the other dude, like uh, you know, th there's an opportunity cost for everything. Like you know, people were acting surprised when uh, Donovan it was it Don Donovan Steele, it was Donovan Sharp Sharp. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They they found out that his his wife was a single mother, and it was like oh. shit was obvious. Yeah. Or they found out she was old. This is a, like you could tell the nigga don't get no bitches, but he's selling the image of the alpha male that people want to see. Or yeah. when uh, uh, what's his name uh, from Fresh and Fit was found out to be paying for prostitutes. Not Myron, the other one. Uh, Myron, no Myron. Myron was, was oh. on. Yeah, Myron's paying for women. It's like, of course he is, because he doesn't get. So the advice, um, um, I, I forgot who said this, but like, you can Google and and you know, you can tell me what the 16th Chapel looks like. You can tell me what paintings are on the wall, but wisdom is the ability to tell me what it smells like. Mm. Like a lot of people who are talking about this stuff, they don't know what they are talking about. They are playing a character and unfortunately like a part of me doesn't even blame them because you have to play a character to be successful in these spaces because the demand is for characters the demand in our community in particular is for theater but we don't want the truth but it's kind of like and i was thinking about what the, the previous gentleman said when he was talking about beauty is a powerful motivator right it brings me mm -hmm. back to the idea is like motivator to do what exactly mm-hmm who are you appealing to? Who are these fucking mythical people that you give a shit about? Unless it's about commerce and that's totally different. But if you are trying to deliver a particular message, who who are you delivering it to? Right. I'm going to reach everybody. So it's like, who's your core audience? If you're mm -hmm. more concerned about reaching a bunch of people who don't know how to read, because they don't, they don't, they don't have the ability to decipher or understand anything. Why are you wasting your time on them? The people mm -hmm. you want are people who actually do want better for the community. If that's the overall goal here. So right. it's like, yeah, beauty is a motivator to do fucking what? Like, exactly. I, like, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that it's not important. It's part of the pillars of the things that you need, but it's not even in the top five. If she doesn't peace, if she doesn't have good credit, man, if listen, she, like, yo, it's, it's, listen. It's, and, and, you know, the thing is, too, um, I remember there was, um, I think it was a soft white underbelly interview. They interviewed a pimp and he said, uh, don't date the woman you like, date the woman who likes you. Mm. And I was like, yo, that's high level. <laughs> because because not not only is it high level because of, you know, um, like we can get into the intricacies of that, but what you also start to realize is, um, going back to the car analogy, right? Um, you don't actually want the Ferrari. Mm. Number one, um, you have to drive the speed limit. <laughs> so unless you're taking it, <laughs> unless you're taking it to to Germany, that shit yeah. bet, it might as well be a Prius, yeah. right? Um, what you're looking for is actually the um, emotional validation of other people's envy. Mm. That's what you're looking for, really, because the, uh. the the car that will actually that you'll actually enjoy the most is the car that doesn't cut into your income every month as much is the car that has a uh, 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 you know better maintenance costs is the car that you can actually drive when the road ends is the car that can be a tool if a zombie apocalypse happens Facts. right and and you could take that same metaphor and put it in a woman mm. Mm. because again her beauty ain't gonna help you 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 might make a case and be like you know because of how pretty she is I could move in rooms that I otherwise wouldn't be able to move in. But again, if she can't set up place for you, you just in that room. Nobody, fam. I've been working in corporate for a long time, and I'm telling you this right now. Nobody gives a shit. The 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 thing like, and not to put my own business out there, but what makes my situation more like um I don't want to say enviable, but makes people look at it more is that my wife's the CEO of something else. Like she runs an organization. So they want to talk to her. Like they'll go through me to talk to her. And that's what makes her incredibly valuable. And mm. not if she's like, I could, like, I, I could think of like five guys who have gorgeous wives. I don't know their names. I just <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's that, it's that immediate. And, and you know, the, the the other thing too is like going back to the whole trophy versus treasure thing is like, 
um, you you want to show off a trophy. Yeah. But guess what? It's going to be a different hands next year. The yeah. NBA championship is in different hands the next year. The NFL championship is in different hands. The Super Bowl, I'm sorry, is in different hands next year. Back. But a treasure, you want to hide it. You don't want to show a treasure. True. I got I got I got fifty pounds of gold bricks under my bed. I don't want you to know that. That's in a safe that is hidden away in case of emergency, right? And I think oftentimes, and we're not honest about this as men, like we are still adolescent in our evaluation of women's mm. value. That's right? Rare. We're looking for trophies, not treasures. We're looking for because because the other piece too, I mean not not to be too crass, but like the 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 thing that we are anticipating, the, 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 the dopamine hit we're getting is uh, in anticipation of the sexual pleasure she will provide us. And what you'll find <laughs> is, is the highest level of sexual pleasure is not going to be. They not the one that God gave the WAP. I've, I'm telling if if people are listening who know, they know. When, when you're looking for a wife, when you're looking for it, just like when you're looking for a car, just like when you're looking for a home, you have to you have to be honest about what is it that you need first and foremost? And then what are the costs of the things that you want? And then ask yourself, do I actually want that? I mean, I think at a point you do, but I think the, when we have these conversations, we, we tend to forget that people evolve and mature. What mm -hmm. I want. 30 is not what I want at 40. Right. Just like the, the, the kind of women that I would entertain at 25 couldn't even have a conversation with me now. Like I wouldn't mm -hmm. a circle cause they offer yeah. no, like I, I don't, I'm not tap dancing for anybody anymore. So it's just like, if that's not part of your, your metric. And we've had this conversation before where I say the number yeah. one reason why I married my wife was because I think about when I, like, I'm, I mean, I'm going to have a son, but like if I, if I, or to think about the kind of woman I want him to be with, I want him to be with someone like his mom. And if I have a daughter, I want her to be like her mother. I don't want, like most of these nines and tens that everybody thinks is crazy cute. It's like, would you be comfortable that if you raise a little girl that she turned into that, that's what you want your daughter to turn into? See, we're not, we're not, we're not talking about that. <laughs> that and and that, that's, that's, that's the, that's where, I think um, we have to own some of that blame because it is to a degree supply and demand, right? It, it is whatever we keep projecting, whatever we keep validating is what we will see more of. Same with women, right? We talk about women, oh, they're giving the pussy to thugs and this, this and that. That is absolutely true. And unfortunately, uh, the next generation of pookies won't be able to read but they'll be able to do TikTok dances. They'll be able to look <laughs> max. They'll have beards. They'll be six, five. They'll have curly hair. Right. We're going to have some gorgeous as useless sons. Right now. Similarly, it goes the same for the women. Right. It, it, and, and, you know, not to pick on gorgeous people, but like part of the reason why sometimes that's all they are is because that's all they have to be. Yeah. Right. If, if, if you don't work a muscle, it atrophies. And similarly, if you don't work certain personality traits, they atrophy as well. And if you are only validated, like my daughter right now, my, 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 my daughter's three years old, gorgeous. I'm making it a case to make sure, and she knows she's pretty. I'm making it a case to make sure that she forgets that shit. That's good. I'm making it a case to make sure that she, uh, she arrives in the world with her value primarily, her value and her skill set, her mindset and her disposition. And what? her beauty be just, you know, that's cool too, right? So with my Toyota Tundra, I might get some, you know, some off-road uh, wheels on it. I might get it blacked out on some cool paint. It's not in my face. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's going to be a pretty car. It's not going to be a Ferrari, yeah. right? But it, it's going to be, I'm going to be able to tow some shit. But it, you know, if the zombie apocalypse happens, I'll be able to, you know what I'm saying? Tundra, that's what it's about. Tundra has way more value, more utility for you. <laughs> yep. And, and also, I mean, even literally speaking, uh, the resale value of a Tundra from a percentage standpoint is far greater than a, uh, than a Ferrari. I love these car analogies. They, like if you want to be a video on that, cause this is very accurate. It's real. Yeah. No, it, it's it, real. You yeah. got a Tundra, you got a Tacoma, you could buy that shit today, put 200 miles on it, sell it and get your money back pretty much. But a Ferrari, as soon as you drive it off the lot, cause the other thing too, that people don't realize 
about rich people. Rich people don't want another nigga's Ferrari mm. or another nigga's mansion. Damn. They might want the land that he built it on, but I don't want Diddy's fucking mansion. <laughs> Unless I'm the biggest Diddy fan. If I can afford Diddy's mansion, I want to tear that shit down and build my own. Facts. That's real. That's real. right. So so all this, all this uh uh, you know, we watch cribs back in the day, or now it's like Esquire and shit like that, and we put so much and even watching people, we put so much value on the aesthetic beauty, but it's like you get under the surface and there's nothing there. I mean And those- not just nothing there in them, but there's nothing there for us. Well, it goes back to your point, what you were saying earlier, is that those things are fun to show off. Like, I I rented out, like, I did, I think we did, like, a Martha's Vineyard trip uh, to to the Inkwell, like, I think a couple of years ago. Mm. Got a really, really nice house, cost 10 racks. Mm. And I think, it, like, I mean, it was a whole bunch of us. I ain't doing that shit by myself. Right. I was about to say, <laughs> like, my boy. Yeah. 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 No, but it's just, like, you do that, so... When people come over, wow, this is how y'all living? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ain't nobody trying to live like that for real. Mm-hmm. Nope. It's, cool. it's cool for other people to come over and look at it. But like I say, mm-hmm. I leave the bedroom. You I don't want to you don't want to clean them counters. You don't want to vacuum that carpet. You don't want to mow that grass. You ever seen a big ass yard? You're like, who the fuck is mowing <laughs> this shit? But if you have a certain amount of money, yeah, I'm gonna get somebody else to do it. But like, you know, from a metaphorical standpoint, you have to consider. What is the opportunity cost of a big ass house? Yep. What is the opportunity cost of a fast ass car? And yep. do I actually want the cost? And I think the difference with uh, mature men and adolescent men, at least if I as I've transitioned from adolescent to mature, because I'm I'm the same way. I want a pretty ass woman too. Yeah. But it's like you have to become more uh, um, more honest and familiar with what it is that you actually want. Right like, and and how pr- I'm curious when you said yeah. you want, how pretty are we talking? Like, do you want a girl who just finished nursing school, looks good, willing to be ambitious, or do you want somebody who makes money off her looks? Because there's levels to this shit, right? Like, it's not just you this, know this this is this is this is where I'm at. I'm I'm I'm. I think that have you have you heard uh, this whole thing about the BBL smell? No, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Google it. Yeah, BBLs apparently have a smell, and there there are various theories about it, right? It, 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 one of the theories is, you know, if you grew up with a pancake butt and overnight you get a massive ass, you are accustomed to cleaning a pancake butt, so you don't know how to clean a massive ass, right? So uh, that you know that that becomes a smell over time. Um, the other theory is, you know, the sutures leaking and, you know, it's, it's a, it's a liposuction and mm-hmm. then, you know, uh, putting it back in your ass, like, yeah, it creates a smell, like just how a hospital smell. Um, so, so for me, um, I think obviously, you know, beauty, part of beauty is, um, I, I look at it as like a, a video game, right? You know, like when you're playing 2k, when you're playing some fighting game, you have like attack defense speed shit like that and and the little thing can move to you know the web web chart i think it's called yeah depending on how you maximize each skill and i think like bone structure is a part of that i think that body is a part of that um i also think like movement is a part of that now the the next things i'm about to name like movement are as i've matured movement uh speaking voice um uh, skin texture, Jesus. S- s- <laughs> scent, right? So I say that to say I've seen bad bitches with the bone structure, with the body structure, but she smells like black and mouse. Done. <laughs> I've seen black, bad, bad bitches with the bone structure, the the body structure, but her ass is hard. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Every fat ass, this is the most wise thing I'm going to say tonight. Every fat ass is not soft. I mean, every fat ass is not soft. Unless it's fake. It's got to be fake then. No, no. Some, some women just muscular. Oh, shit. Some, like, like, um, you know, uh, you know, I'm African. Uh, some Ghanaian women. The shit is pop, pop, but the shit hard as a motherfucker. It's hard as a rock. Huh. So, that matters, or you know, you see a woman and then her skin texture feels rough, or it doesn't feel uh, like we, we you, you've. You, I, I remember it was, it was 
in 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 college but there was some random white girl and i shook her hand and i was like god damn her hand was the softest thing i had ever felt in my life at that point <laughs> it's different right and the same goes for vagina and all that good stuff so I, I i say all that to say my analysis of pretty has um has matured as well right my my analysis of so what matters more to me now than like the the uh, tangible things that she had no control over are the uh, intangible, I'm sorry, are the tangible things that she does have control over, right? Uh, how, how does she take care of herself? How does she move? How does she feel? You know, those are what matter more than just so you, structure and body. I mean, I only go to you because you're a role model. Like, I mean, you have like tons of followers. So people follow mm -hmm. and listen to you like crazy. So I'm curious in the listing of the things, because since we're talking about this, like when we talk about pop the balloon and like the people mm -hmm. that I'm curious as someone who's thoughtful, who thinks into it, when you're lit, like when you're kind of um, putting these things on a list, where do you put this pretty then? Like, you know, like, you know, you're going down your, your top to your, your mm -hmm. bottom or to your number five or number six on the list. Where does pretty rank on that? Cause if, if someone as thoughtful as you mm -hmm. has all the way up here, then there really is no hope for a lot of motherfuckers. Well, so th this is, when I was in Colombia, I thought to myself, like, I really want my brother to come. And not so he can go get him a prostitute and have a good time, but so that he can become desensitized to pretty. Mm. Like, mm. I, I think I think as a man in particular, and not just with women, but every other pretty thing in life, I think you have to, uh, to a certain uh, degree, become desensitized, right? I think that... Um, you know, for me, one of the freeing things was learning the distinction between attractive and attracted, right? Mm -hmm. um, when I was, you know, younger, 20s, teenager, I only considered if she was attractive. I never considered if I was attracted, mm -hmm. right? So then I would fixate on if she likes me. I never considered if I liked her. Right. right. So, so these, these, um, additional things that I've added to my evaluation of pretty are in an attempt to make that distinction for myself. Right. But, um, you know, pretty still gets you in the door. Right. But it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't get you any further for me. Okay. Nice to look at. Cool. Right. This going back to the car analogy. Oh, it's a beautiful car. What's under the hood. Cause that's what I have. That's what I have to deal with. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my, <laughs> that's yeah. what I have to do, right? Because, but again, like, not to shit on the young dudes, but like, it, it, it is, and I'm saying this like I'm old, but it, <laughs> it, 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 you have to experience that shitty, beautiful car to mm. understand that a beautiful car doesn't mean a good car. A beautiful car, a fast car, doesn't mean a reliable car, right? Yeah. And as you mature, now what's more important is, okay, how many miles can I put on it? Will it crank? When I turn the key, <laughs> will it, will it be able to tow this thing that I need? Will I be able to pick up some shit without having to go to U-Haul? Like that's the stuff that begins to matter. But I think unfortunately, um, a lot of men, even men older than me remain in that adolescent, uh, 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 paradigm of simply ending the conversation as at she's attractive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I, th I think it takes away your agency a bit, right? And and that that's something I wanted to bring up with the other guy. But, like, if all she had to do to inspire all these chemicals and actions that follow from you was, was nothing, because it's nothing. Yeah. Her dad and her mom gave her that. She didn't work for that, yeah. right? If, if, all, that, if That means that your attention is cheap. And that's something that women accuse us of, right? We, we, we're easily manipulated. We're easily distracted because of, now that's still true. <laughs> I'm going to see a fat ass and I'm going to look. However, my next thought is, damn, maybe that shit stink. But just like when I see the car, damn, what's his car insurance? That's what I start thinking about now. To stay with that analogy, right? It's like, of course, every guy is going to look, but how many mm -hmm. of the guys that are out there looking have good credit, right? It's like mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So which, 
it's like we focus too heavily on people with a 580 credit score when we should be directing our attention to the people that actually have a chance at actually, um, you know, being good owners. Right. If you don't have a social credit of like, you know, 700, 720, why are we having these conversations? Like the men who aren't able to take the time to, um, you know, like, like, represent themselves and illustrate like you know some kind of discernment like why do we focus on them because i don't think it's everybody actually I, I i'm beginning the more i spend time around people and the more i like out in the world it's like one a lot of this stuff is very um dependent upon where you are in life what age you're at in life because like when i look at men who are 35 and over this is not as much of an issue like right. you're able to actually focus and right. that's to be like more concerned about like because the guys who are just like you know i'm looking at every pretty thing or even instagram like yo the fact that that's even a thing is wild to me because you cannot bring that person around anybody that you respect mm. it'd be like yo here's this girl that i met because everyone especially if you're dating someone you're, you're doing it for a purpose the mm. first thing everyone always asks you how'd y'all meet oh she was on instagram and i slid into her dms is that a conversation you want to have to have with your mom mm. the, right to you like it's like most men aren't doing that shit so it's like i think we just just like you said like all the time with the women how they focus on the pookies and ray rays i think we do that too we get way mm. into uh the dudes who are easily distracted who don't who aren't grown yet i i, I agree but i also think that um you know just just like when i when i'm watching the pop the balloon show like um I I think introspection is being able to see yourself in in those people as well, mm -hmm. right? Like I, I I I there there's some stupid shit that I've observed from them niggas, and I'm like, yo, I I, I used to think like that. I used to do <laughs> that. I did that yesterday. You know what I'm saying? And it 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 wasn't until um uh, I observe it outside myself that I realize how dumb I looked or how stupid this thought process was. And, you know, similarly, I think it's, 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 it's wise for us to do that even in, uh, even in the manosphere. Like I might be critical of Myron, but there I've, I've been Myron in different ways, oh, yes. right? Mm -hmm. I, I might be critical of, uh, of, of just pearly, but th there's, there's some just pearly in me in some sense. Right. So I, I think that in order for us to be level headed and, 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 maintain some level of humility uh humility i'm sorry this hard line that we like to put like pookie and ray ray and then good guy over here it's not that simple no. like they, 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 there's some pookie and ray ray in all of us yeah. at least <laughs> there's a there's a small aspiration sometimes even or or even you know there's some things just like pookie and ray ray can learn some things from these guys there's some things we can learn from pookie and ray ray uh when it comes to uh, maintaining women's attention or 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 uh, but, speaking confidently or whatever the case may be well that's the thing i i, I get really nervous about that as a culture because i really want us to like which women's attention i don't want us mm. wanting those women like I, I really want us to evolve past that like, well so <laughs> um what's his name what's his name that wrote that book mode one uh Kevin heard. Samuels used to reference him a good bit. Oh, let me Google it real quick. Um, Alan something, Alan. The only Alan I know is Greenspan, and he's not around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's my business, but yeah. Uh, 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 Alan something, mode one. Alan Roger Curry. Oh. Yes, Alan Roger Curry. Um, he talked about in that in that book and in some of his talks, he talked about uh, a, a an archetype of woman called the wholesome pretender. <laughs> okay. And basically uh, the wholesome pretender is literally when we say freaking the uh, lady in the streets, freaking the sheets. That's basically what uh, the wholesome pretender is. And he claims that most women are that like, well, most women have uh, that dark side. Like most women have those, um, urges or, or fantasies that are less than ideal. If you look at some of the shit these women be reading from the best possible women, you would be like, 
this lady is so <laughs> so I, I say that to say um i think oftentimes because as men we're so black and white we're so objective yeah i think oftentimes we uh fail to cultivate the color necessary to keep up with women because women are women are people in the best and worst ways whereas men literally being a man is is learning how to not be a person but to your point because when you're saying that like here's what's going through my mind right where you say that it's like every woman's capable of being this kind of um jekyll and hyde person right like you know yeah. we're getting two different personalities here but i don't i don't see that in every community mm. i think we raise people a certain way to do this like they're like Great example. Every girl goes through a bad boy phase, right? Like, I don't care what demographic you're from. If you're white, you're Hispanic, you're Asian, whatever. Everybody goes through a bad boy phase. We're the only group of people who want to marry our bad boys. That's it. Like, no, you will not catch a Jewish girl who had an affinity for dudes with tattoos and leather jackets marrying that guy. No, she marries a guy who's a lawyer or, you know, a physician. Same thing with some East Asian girl. She might like some dude who has the aesthetic of like the tattoos, bikes, all that other stuff. But who does she end up with? Who does she go after when she's a, a mature person? We have 35 year old social workers lusting after dudes who just got out. But but this is what I'll say. I, I don't think, I think the mistake we make sometimes is that's true. Yeah. But I think the assumption, the immediate assumption is it, uh, it speaks to some virtue that these women have and our women lack. It speaks to some maturity that these women have and our women lack. I would actually um, submit that left to their devices, they would be the exact same way. I think the difference is um, they have checks and balances that our women don't have. Mm. They have active fathers. They have structured cultural systems that not only mandate these institutions, but mandate and and uh, reinforce the necessity for it, That's right? Our, our, our culture doesn't reinforce the necessity for it. So all we're left with is love is for marriage. That's, mm -hmm. not, that's not in the Indian community. That's not in the Hispanic community. So uh, it comes out as if the Hispanic women, the Indian women are better women, the, the you know, uh, uh, was, I was watching, um, lead attorney's stream once. And he said that, you know, in his career as a divorce lawyer, um, the nastiest women in the divorce court are Asian women. Oh shit. He said the most brutal women, when we talk about, she took me for everything I have uh. it is Asian women. Now, is it any, is it any, uh, surprise? No, not at that all. When no, we're also all. talking about the most feminine, the most docile, it's also Asian women. It's both two sides of the same coin. Well, they're also the most studious. So I don't like somebody made a calculation. They were calculating long before they got to that point what was going to happen. Yeah. I believe that. I don't, I don't have any yeah. data, but back that no, up. No, listen, I, I agree with you. But like I said, I, I think um, the mistake we make often, and I think we do this with men as well, is like we think that our uh, our um, circumstances is a, is a is a consequence of some failing, some moral or some intellectual failing, as opposed to a structural uh, societal failing. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's what goes back to like history and culture and society. That's what's failed us. And it's put us in um, very precarious situations where we have to be more than moral to seem moral. Whereas these Asian women, these Hispanic women who have these same uh, proclivities get to hide under the veneer of wholesomeness because of the structures created for them. Um, hmm. That's a... I, like, I would have to think deeply on it because I because I just like and maybe this is me being lied to and I'm just not realizing it because you could be right I don't know mm -hmm. I just kind of wonder like I think there are people who because of like social conditioning just mm -hmm. don't have the same desire like I think it does come from some kind of social conditioning like 
the way that I'm spoken to by mm -hmm. some women versus others, it, there is like, I think anybody would be loose with their mouth if they didn't have mm -hmm. a check. Like men, I think men, the great thing about us is that we get punched in the mouth early. And mm -hmm. we, we know immediately when we're around a man who does it, who hasn't, where we know immediately somebody's soft, you know, immediately some dude has never uh, scuffled, never been in a fight, never felt like threatened at all because he speaks recklessly. So we mm -hmm. have a built-in check by just being men. So it's just like, I, I do wonder if that's what we're lacking on our side more than anything. Yeah, 100%. Else. Yeah. 100%. And, and like I said, I think, I think that's, that's what's dangerous about certain conversations about our women specifically or, or our people generally. It's like, it, it, it's as opposed to a lack of structure, which we can fix, yeah. it's, it, it, it almost always devolves to this uh, eugenic, eugenicist view of black people being morally and intellectually inferior. But I would, uh, I would suggest that we are all morally and intellectually inferior to some degree. Now, the difference is what structures are created to uh, maximize our potential to seem another way. But these Asian women, these white women, these Hispanic women, they're just as freaky, if not more, they're just as uh, 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 infidelity, you know, ridden, if not more. Like, I saw this thing that was going viral recently that said that, you know, um, Hollywood love stories only celebrate infidelity, right? When you look at the notebook, infidelity, <laughs> the Titanic, infidelity, you, you go down the list. It's all about infidelity. Now, who are writing these stories? White women yeah. who are participating in these stories. Yeah. White women who is the face of infidelity, black women. Right? Same goes for crime. Yeah. Right? So I'm I'm just saying, like, especially as the people who are affected by these negative stereotypes, it is incumbent upon us to think past what it looks like and consider what it is. Because the only thing white people know how to do better than us is hide. And market. They market better. Hide market and branding. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But let me let you go, brother. I still got brothers in the back. It's always good to chop it up with you, man. Yeah. But uh I gotta get everybody else some some you know some some time. But appreciate yeah. you, man. Take right. it easy. Hey, if you've made it all the way to the end, please click that like and subscribe button. Also share this with somebody that you think would gain value from it. Click the thumbnail at the top if you want the full video. Click the thumbnail at the bottom if you want a video that's closely related to this. Again, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys for watching. Check out some more of our content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.